Hi everyone, my name is Joanna Vicente, Executive Director and Co-Head of TIFF. And I'm Cameron Bailey, Artistic Director and Co-Head of TIFF. And thank you for joining us for today's special event for the TIFF Tribute Awards. Today is day six of the festival. We're past the halfway point. And yesterday we brought audiences an in-conversation event with the great Ava DuVernay, an industry masterclass from screen legend Aaron Sorkin, and premieres of films including 76 Days and 180 Degree Rule, and also Good Joe Bell. Tonight, we're looking forward to premieres from Bandar Band, MLK FBI, Trickster, and many others. And this evening, we can't wait to present the inaugural broadcast of the TIFF Tribute Awards to viewers across Canada at 8 p.m. on CTV and around the world on Variety.com. And it was important to Cameron and I that ahead of showtime, we gathered with the supporters who helped make this possible to give thanks and to celebrate this incredible milestone. This has been a challenging year for everyone and for the film industry. Film productions have been halted, events have been postponed, and the film festival circuit has had to rally to share our passion for film in new ways. We will be soon be joined by Variety Stephen Gatos, who will kick off our press conference. But first, we're delighted to have you join us to mark the occasion and to meet this year's Tick Tribute Award honorees. A sincere thank you to our lead sponsor, Bell, and our major sponsors, RBC, L'Oreal Paris, and Visa, for their continued support, as well as our major supporters, the Government of Ontario, Telefilm Canada, and the City of Toronto. Beyond recognizing the film industry's outstanding contributors, the Tribute Awards also serve as an important fundraiser to support TIFF's year-round programs. The awards play a crucial role in raising awareness of what TIFF as a not-for-profit does to continue bringing our programming to diverse audiences all year round. This includes our community initiatives and industry programs that support the next generation of film talent, such as TIFF Writers Studio, our Filmmakers Lab, and TIFF Rising Stars. We wanna take a moment to thank those who've made direct contributions this year, many of whom are with us right now. The chair of TIFF's board of directors, Jennifer Torrey. Our award sponsors, L'Oreal Paris, MGM, Participant, and Variety. The TIFF tribute industry leaders and honorees circles, Sony Pictures Classics, Anchorage Capital Group, MGM, UI Canada, Empire Communities, Term Group, Joel and Barbara Marcus, and Heather and Maxwell Gottlieb. And finally, our members, without whom the 45th edition of the Toronto International Film Festival would not have been possible. We're grateful for your support in keeping TIFF strong. Hello also to all our Festival Press Corps and industry delegates who join us today from around the world. And now, without further ado, I am so pleased to introduce this year's Tribute Award honorees. Screen legends Kate Winslet and Sir Anthony Hopkins TIFF Tribute Actor Awards. Welcome, Sir Anthony. Where are you joining us from? From Los Angeles, from um, Pacific Palisades. In Los Great. Angeles. Very smoky here. <laughs> it's an honor to be Great. here. And, um, so. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you very much. Great privilege, thank you. Do we have Kate Winslet? We might. Cameron, let's. Uh, sure, well, let's uh, move on. Maybe we'll uh, we'll have Kate join us in a moment. We also have a filmmakers Chloe Zhao, the Tiff Ebert Director Award, and Mira Nair, Jeff Skoll Award in Impact Media. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Hello. Thank Lovely you. Where are you guys to be here. Us from? Say that again, Cameron. Where are you joining us from? Here, you're I'm in New York. I'm joining from New York City, from my little yeah. cocoon, right. uh, New York City, <laughs> Manhattan. And Chloe? Uh, all high California. Okay. Ooh. How's the air out there? Better than yesterday. Okay. That's all we can hope for. So. Good. Um, we also have award-winning composer Terrence Blanchard, who is the recipient of the TIFF Variety Artisan Award this year. Hello, Terrence. Hey, Cameron. How are you doing? Good, good. How are you? And you are where today? 
How many ones Louisiana avoiding a hurricane? That a hurricane. If it's not fire, it's a hurricane. No, yeah. It's, if it's not one thing, it's another. Yeah. Wow. Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. We also have filmmaker Tracy Deer, Team Emerging Talent Award, presented by L'Oreal Paris and supported by MGM. It's presented in honor of Toronto's own Mary Pickford. This award celebrates a woman making groundbreaking strides in the industry. So welcome, Tracy. Your first feature piece just premiered at TIFF. How are you feeling? I am over the moon to be here. I am so thrilled and honored to be among these giants of creativity and uh, the whole festival has been such a whirlwind so far. So I'm, I'm on top of, I'm on cloud nine right now. <laughs> nice, Tracy, we are so proud of you and everything you've done. Tracy is an alumna of TIFF's talent development programs and uh, she'll debut her first feature being this year's festival. That's just happened actually. Uh, TIFF is committed to championing women and diverse voices in film. In this year's lineup, for instance, 45% of our films are directed, co-directed, or created by women, and 48% of uh, the pieces we have in the festival are by Black, Indigenous, or filmmakers of color. Through our Shared Journey initiative, we also continue to provide access to mentorship, skills, development, and other opportunities for women behind and in front of the camera. I'm going to ask Chloe, because while I was at the IFP and she took a part of the Filmmaker Lab and then we gave her an award at the Gotham Awards, the Leave to Dream Award, like what is the importance of getting supported just early on in your career and getting that validation and support? I think to have that um, support, to have the, you, you know, even the financial support that came with it, to make me not feel the need to conform and to really discover something that I want to say at that early stage was so crucial. And I wouldn't be able to go to South Dakota to the reservation and make the films I did if I didn't have those support. I see we have Kate here. Uh, Kate, where are you uh, calling <laughs> you from today? And thanks for joining us. Um, I'm calling from another planet um, <laughs> where there's no Wi-Fi and very little 4G. Um, <laughs> it's called the south coast of England. Actually, just wow. England. Um, <laughs> Um, where the, uh, the the tea flows freely and nothing works. Um, <laughs> but here I am. Thank you so much for thank you so much for for having me. And um, I apologise for my technical malfunctions. No worries at all. We're so glad to have you here. Um, this is a thrill for for us, for Joanna and me. We um, we really do try to make TIFF a place where we can uplift, connect to global filmmaking community. We can't do it in person as much this year, but we're glad that you're all joining us here. We're so pleased to be here today with some of the community's leading voices. I know our audience would like to hear from each of you. I wonder if you've got any favorite memories of having been in Toronto for our festival in person, things that happened with you or your films here? Maybe Mira, we can start with you. I know you've got a memory from 2001. Oh my goodness, do I. Well, I was trying not to think of the darker times in that sense, but yes, I, I mean, you've been so, such a, you know, heralding of most of my films really from the beginning. But of course, the most memorable that every journalist in this world almost reminds me of is when Monsoon Wedding, my film of 2001, uh, had the press screening. We just won the Golden Lion. We'd come in that the night before. We had a press screening in the morning of September 11th. And people literally came out dancing out of the theater, even journalists dance. And, um, and the world had changed, you know, in that space of two hours. And, um, it was absolutely cataclysmic and um, and we all actually did what we can't do today, which is we came together and we all stayed together. It didn't matter who we were and how great or how small. Uh, it was bewildering and comforting and confusing, but we hung in there and, um, and that night when the premiere was supposed to be uh, at Roy Thompson Hall, we didn't have it uh, and we instead had this big Indian dinner 
and everybody came because everybody really needed to just hold on to each other. Uh, so that was a passionate time, you know, when you came out of believing in life and life had actually altered forever. Thank you. Who else has a favorite memory? <laughs> Maybe not quite as dramatic. Yeah, well, you, you set me up to that. <laughs> I was talking, going to talk of happy things. But it was happy and what it was. <laughs> I think I was there a number of years ago. Uh, and I think what struck me about the festival was, you know, you know, we all have this life of being an artist, but then we have our separate lives as being human beings. And it's such an interesting thing to be around people who are, who are just as committed to the, their craft as you are and to see that the love and passion that they have for making films, you know, it's not just lost. You know, you're, 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 you're in an area where everybody is, is working towards a common goal of creating something interesting to experience or trying to create or try to tell interesting stories. And that part of it is comforting for a composer because mostly we sit in the room by ourselves all the time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So to be in an area where you can share that camaraderie and that kind of energy with people, man, I remember it being something that was really a lot of fun. I remember going to some of the, the, the presentations during the day in beautiful theaters, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and um, hanging out at night, you know, doing the nerd thing, talking about the process of making film and our experiences in the business. Uh, you know, it's something, it's one of those moments in your life, like Mary said, it, it changes you because, you know, you don't feel so alone mm -hmm. at that point. And it's also such a wonderful way of just, you cra literally crash into people in like yes. hotel lobbies and, you know, lines waiting to get into a conference or some big hilarious photo ensemble where there are all these people you admire but, and, and, and everyone assumes you will know each other, but we none of us have all met each other at all. <laughs> and to be, to be able to go, oh my God, I'm such a huge fan. You know, that's the excitement of running into people you admire so enormously for their artistry and their commitment and... I mean, Anthony, I've been watching you since I was a baby, I feel like, and, and, I, and I wish that we were all in the same space and, and could, could, could hug and connect. In, in, it's, it's, it's sad, it's sad not to, yeah. not to get that bit of TIFF because I think TIFF really is that. It is about closeness and connection and connecting people through films and artistry and, and, uh, and, and, I, and it's, it's such a shame not to be there and I just applaud you guys for plowing on with the festival in the way that you have because you've, you've, you've done it and, and, and here we all are and, and what a gift to share this moment with everybody. Can I just piggyback on what Kate just said? You know, so when she was talking about literally running into people and meeting people for the first time, today, you know, I was a little nervous about setting up my computer so I set it up early and I think Angela was the one that came on and I had my you know, moment of checking my volume and everything. And she says, you can take a break back in 10 minutes. <laughs> well, I come back in 10 minutes and the only person that's on the screen is Sir Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> and, I, and I'm sitting there going, I didn't what even do I know say? it was you know him. Know I mean? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, 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 I literally said, hi, sir. <laughs> That's the only thing I could think of saying. You know? Well, sir Anthony, we have to hear from you now. I think we're all fans on this call. Oh, thank you. Uh, Kate, Kate, we met at the Golden Globes, didn't we? Just briefly. Yeah, briefly, yeah. Some years ago. Yeah. Yes, and those big round tables. And I, I've been to the, I think I've been to four or five festivals in um, Toronto. Served out in Golden to the Edge and, oh, and Woody Allen, and that's about 10, 12 years ago, told that to And again, what, what, what I like about the um, Toronto Film Festival is it's uh, kind of low key and not, you know, it's very popular, but you feel at home. Um, it's a lot of love to you. You just feel welcome and see the off the wall, you know. But I really meeting people like 
<laughs> Danny DeVito. Oh my God, it's Danny DeVito. There we go. Uh, yes, and uh, um, it was wonderful. And I was only there for, you know, uh, Woody Allen. Uh, so I haven't been there for some years. It was this is a great honor to be here today. Thank you all so much. Congratulations to all of you. Lots of love. We can't wait to officially honor our outstanding, your outstanding contributions during this evening's broadcast of the Tip Tribute Awards on CTV and internationally on Variety.com. And I'd now like to introduce our moderator for the press conference today. Vice President of Content at Variety, Stephen Gatos. Over to you, Stephen. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hello. Cameron and I are delighted to welcome you to the Tiff Tribute Gala. Thank you, Tiff. Thank you so much for this event being so much about movie making. It's fun to do this in a crowd like this, this beautiful movie crowd, in my home country of Canada. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much. This is a huge honor. I'm so embarrassed to admit this, but uh, I, I feel overwhelmed with emotion. Hello, uh, this is Stephen Gatos from Variety in Los Angeles, and uh, it's just a great honor and a great pleasure to be part of the TIFF Tribute Awards press conference. Um, it is surreal, as we have all been chatting uh, in the last few minutes, because um, I think everyone is missing each other. They're missing the beginning of what we would call awards season, which traditionally starts with TIFF and a few other festivals but we're soldiering on and we're all here uh, virtually and we're going to have a, a bit of a chat about uh, TIFF and about the movies that uh, the folks that are on with me today uh, are representing and uh, and we'll see what else we get into. We have lots of questions from uh, uh, journalists around the world who have been kind enough to uh, help us out. I'm going to go back through our honorees because I want to be a little bit formal and uh, talk about uh, each uh, film that they're here with, uh, so we all know and keep reference to what we uh, what we'd all be in TIFF seeing, but we're all going to be seeing one way or another. A um, little bit of background: the uh, Tribute Awards began only a year ago to recognize achievements of the leading industry figures, and uh, this show that we're doing right now is going to be on Canada on CTV at eight o'clock tonight. Uh, it's going to screen internationally on Variety.com, which makes me very happy as a guy from Variety. Um, we're going to be really trying to celebrate the crafts and the individual achievements and um, try to continue that core mission, of um, which is transforming the way people see things. You know, the festivals, and I've been going and participating and writing about festivals for an awfully long time, um, there's really two movie industries. There's a gigantic big commercial film industry with lots of entertaining movies, and it's a really essential part of people's lives. There's another part, uh, I think, for the people on this call and people who go to TIFF and other festivals, it's a very precious uh, commodity, a very precious endeavor. Um, it's the other films. It's the films that need festivals. They need folks like the people on uh, this press conference to uh, engage in them, to create them, to support them, uh, to talk about them and share them. And TIFF is such an essential part of that. Before all of this started today, I was talking with a major person in the New York um, industry, and they were so nostalgic uh, about how the entire community, um, the, around the world, the community of journalists, uh, filmmakers, we would all be uh, crowding onto buses and be in hotel lobbies and we would all be in TIFF uh, and the whole awards season 
would really be beginning and it would be a communal thing that we would all be experiencing. Thankfully, thanks to Joanna, Cameron, everybody that is uh, making this stuff happen today, we're doing what we can to have continuity, to continue that. And um, I think that, uh, you know, Cameron spoke earlier about TIFF very specifically in these changing times, um, the representation of women, the representation of people of color. Um, I think this festival this year is a noteworthy and notable bridge to next year where I think we're all gonna get together and uh, we're all gonna be in the same space. And uh, I can be starstruck uh, with the people on this call in person instead of on a camera. So we'll try that. Um, let me go back to um, introductions of our panelists today. Um, we have the TIFF Tribute Actor Award honoree, Kate Winslet, whose film is in the festival, Ammonite. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Virtual hi. Hi. Uh, hi there. Uh, we have Terrence Blanchard. Terrence, where did we reach you today? I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana. Right in New Orleans. Orleans. I was hoping you were going to say that. Yes. Um, he is our Variety, I'm proud to say, Variety Artist and Award honoree, and I uh, believe you have two films in TIFF this year, Bruised yes. and One Night in Miami. Yes. Um, the Jeff Skoll Award and Im Impact Media honoree, uh, Mira Nair. Hmm. Hello, Mira. Hello. Um, I believe you have a suitable boy in the festival. Um, Chloe Shao, uh, you're, I heard, in Ojai, California. Yes. And uh, you've had a big week. Uh, were you in Venice uh, recently? No, I was in the parking lot in Pasadena when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> well, what we're laughing about and talking about is uh, the newest uh, Golden Lion uh, honoree uh, in our world is Chloe for uh, her film Nomadland. Congratulations. Um, yay. <laughs> and uh, you're this year's TIFF Ebert Director Award honoree. Um, Tracy Deer, we have you as our Emerging Talent honoree, and your film is there called Beans. Hello. Hello. Hi there. And Sir Anthony Hopkins, um, here with us on the West Coast, uh, Pacific Palisades, California, uh, the Tribute Actor Award honoree and uh, getting such great notices with your new film, which is in TIFF, called The Father. Hello, and uh, Hello. 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 Thank you. We're, we're, we're in the breakfast hours here. Yes. So um, one thing to continue what we were talking about a little bit and, uh, and continue on that theme, I wanted to go around the room because everyone has um, very different kinds of experiences and memories, but um, could we talk just for a minute about the importance of festivals like TIFF, whether it be TIFF specifically or festivals in general? Um, Chloe, we'll, we'll start with you because uh, you've had quite a week with a festival, but you didn't get to be there. Um, where was The Writer, uh, the film that uh, Variety uh, critics love so much? And we had you, I, I have to brag for a minute, we had you on our directors to watch only two years ago. Uh, where were you uh, in the circuit with the writer, for instance? Well, to me, the writer was such an incredible experience because I got to bring Brady, the, the lead in the writer, the, the young cowboy from South Dakota, with me. And to me, festivals are so inc incredible in that sense that when, I, when we premiered at Cannes, and also you know, when we traveled to TIFF and many other festivals, to see the audience's reaction to someone like him, who has just the total different lives and, and, you know, different kind of beliefs and other things that we feel like the world is dividing us, that when they see him on the stage, people are connecting to him as human beings and, and hugging him. And just seeing that connection, that human connection, the festival allow people from all over the world to have is, is so incredible. That's what, that was my favorite part of the writer's uh, festival journey. <laughs> You. Kate, um, um, how long have you been uh, going to festivals? Do you remember sort of early days of, of going to a festival and figuring out that it's a little bit different than going to the multiplex? 
Well, I, I, uh, I remember very, very vividly going to Venice when with, with heavenly creatures when, when I was only I, I was eighteen years old, and and I seem to remember that the the the, the budget, the sort of marketing budget didn't really allow for people to actually stay for longer than was absolutely necessary in Venice. And so I think I was there for truly 24 hours. And my, my lovely agent, um, Dallas Smith in, in, in England, who I've been with since I was 15, he was so excited and so determined that he couldn't get a hotel room. And he actually just ended up walking around Venice the whole entire night because he had nowhere to go. And we were just so, so excited that, and, and I remember this, sort of remarkable moment of sitting and watching the film with an audience and it was almost as though in that moment the penny dropped for me right then and there of oh my god I'm actually really in a film it wasn't just something that I went and and, and made in New Zealand with all these wonderful people with all of us kind of scrabbling around with next to no budget to put this thing together and that was an education in itself for me because I hadn't even really done anything I'd done sort of a bit of television like so I was so new and and this sort of extraordinary moment of, oh God, that's me. <laughs> that's me. I'm in a, I'm in a real film. <laughs> and so for, you know, for so, so many of us, that's how we began. And, and if it weren't for festivals in particular, like TIFF, I have to say, you know, it's so known and admired for its consistent curation of, of such thought-provoking films, you know, and unwavering in its support of independent films and, uh, and emerging talent and diversity. And, and, and so to be, to, to sort of still be here, you know, invited back and, you know, contributing and, and, and sharing, you know, even in this strange platform, you know, it's, it's just so important to keep connecting and sharing like this. And, um, and I just thank you for including me this year. What a wonderful array of people to not be standing alongside. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was going to ask everybody, can I tell people that I met you? I don't know if, uh, what the answer is because I feel like I have, but it's a little on. Vera, um, You've had a good, uh, good experience in Venice. Can you uh, tell us about that? Uh, I, I should say, I think you also have a golden lion somewhere on your shelf. <laughs> it's, and it's beautifully designed, the golden lion. Yes, I do. Thank you for Monsoon Wedding in 2001 in, um, in Venice. And, and uh, you know, and, and like much of my work, we, we really arrived there without much of a publicity budget, but we had the CD soundtrack of Monsoon Wedding. And, and when we showed Monsoon Wedding in the very stiff, formal Italians in their gowns and actually tiaras, it was a lot uh, it was surprising because in the middle of the film, they literally got up from their seats and threw up their tiaras and started to dance and then proceeded to sit down. And I didn't know, you know, it was like being in India in a, in a 25 rupee uh, ticket or something where they throw money on screen when they like something <laughs> and uh, and and we didn't have a you know it was a really a wonderful reception like that but we, there was no party after there was nothing planned but we had this soundtrack so we went down the block the excelsior and literally our, our cast and family got up on tables put on the soundtrack and it was the best party in venice ever in fact, I got this uh, award of the best mama of Venice or something because everyone came because of the sound and the music. And Beautiful. and uh, we still remember it there. But yeah. uh, festivals are extraordinary, uh, like magnets, you know, for those yeah. of us, like Terence was saying earlier, for those of us in a way that are diseased with cinema, we are sick and wonderfully sick people yeah. where we need uh, to know, which is what festivals give us, that there is an audience, you know, for this uh, hybridity or whatever we bring, and I bring that, you know. And the extraordinary thing about TIFF is that way before all this was fashionable, you know, to be to herald diversity, to herald Black Lives Matter, or to way before it was it was a theme, it was actually TIFF who, which had the most worldly curation and made us all from parts of the world that people didn't even know about, made us all feel that we matter and we yeah. exist and not just that we matter but that there were audiences to absolutely you know enjoy it and to see themselves on screen frankly and to 
and to believe. Um, it, it's an extraordinary feeling, which I deeply miss. I mean, with a suitable boy, which is the first time I've worked uh, in the television medium. I just know cinema, and it, for me, it's six hours of cinema. And all I long for is at least once show it on the big screen before it's just on the box, you know. It, the audience I, is so essential to the experience. Yeah, I'm so sorry I can't do it and see it myself, but I'm really grateful to TIFF to have it out there, you know, in drive-ins and on screens and to keep going in this difficult time. So many of these festivals have the word international in their name. And I think it's a good reminder that from the very beginning in Venice, which we talked about, was the very first uh, film festival, um, that notion of the ultimate diversity is bringing together people from every culture on earth, from every corner of earth, to share movie going together. Um, Terrence, earlier we were talking and you reminded me of something as a musician. Um, musicians, you know, in our minds, musicians hang out together, play in bands and play in clubs and play in concert halls. And it's very communal. And uh, it's, a, it's an experience where the people and the artists come together, except in the film business, the composer uh, has a little bit uh, different uh, role. Festivals uh, give you a chance to, uh, to interact in a different way? Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, and being a jazz musician, it's, it's really worse because when I'm playing a show, you know, I don't get to hang out with the guys in my band because normally I'm going back to my room to work on the film. So I'm <laughs> isolated on the road and isolated at home. So I get it in both, both sides, which is kind of crazy. But the thing that's like really beautiful about going to a festival is that you get to experience so many other different mm -hmm. lifestyles, as Chloe was talking about, people from other different walks of life telling their stories in, in, in beautiful fashions. You know, I, I'm always struck by how stories are constructed, you know, and one of the things being a composer, I'm always fascinated about the direction people will take with music and editing and lighting in terms of how to tell a story. And it's festivals are the only place where you can have that guilty pleasure of, of going and watching films every day for a week without feeling like there's something else you should be doing, you know? Because when I'm home, you know, being a father, being an educator, being a musician, you always feel like I have to do this, then I have to switch over to do that. And there's so many things you kind of compartmentalize. Well, when you get to a festival, man, I just try to Wild. look at the list mm -hmm. and I go, okay, look, I'm going to see this tonight. I'm going to see this tomorrow. Yeah. And I probably have my entire week plotted out by the time before I get to the festival. Yeah. And along with getting a chance, like Kate was talking about, meeting people and talking to people and getting a chance to understand their motivations behind what it is that they do, it's inspiring, you know, because like I said earlier, sometimes you sit, when you're sitting in the room by yourself, you can't see the forest for the trees and you start to feel kind of alone. But when you talk to other people and you see how, how excited they are about getting a chance to show what it is that they worked on, it kind of just juices you up, you know, and motivates you to be better at what it is that you do and more focused. It's a, it's a re good reminder, uh, Terrence, that uh, the festival experience for filmmakers is a learning experience. It's not just the film fans and the people, the critics who come, it's the filmmakers who see a different way of doing things and think, ah, why have we been doing it this way? These people in this part of the world have a completely different vocabulary. Uh, Tracy, you're, um, the newer filmmaker among us, um, your your career kind of started in Toronto in a sense, right? It depends what you mean by that. Well, um, what we were talking about earlier in the workshops and, and uh, being part of TIFF. Oh, yes. Um, so I have been a part of the TIFF studio and TIFF Filmmaker Lab in 2017 and 2018. Um, all working on actually the film that I'm here with the festival. Um, I've been working on Beans for about 10 years and it's, it's a very personal film. It's a very personal story. And so I really did struggle with how do I tell that? How do I, how do I do that story justice? And both of those programs really helped me get, get past a lot of self doubt, a lot of internal resistance, to, to be sitting with other writers, other filmmakers. And as a director, you, you're very rarely with other directors. You know, it is, it is a very solitary pursuit. 
So for TIFF to bring us all together and for us to grapple with all of those, those issues together and to be really vulnerable. When you're on set, you can't be vulnerable. Like on set, you have to lead and you, everyone needs answers. And I feel anyway, I, I like to project that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, but to get together with a bunch of directors and just be like, oh my God, I mean, sometimes I'm not sure. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very it's very reassuring, very freeing. Um, and the Filmmaking Lab in 2018 really helped me get through a difficult period to push through and finally now be here with, with that film. So it's been, I love festivals and I love, love, love TIFF. <laughs> Sir Anthony, um, yes. are there um, amongst the many, uh, you know, honors and awards shows and festivals where your work has been in retrospectives, before there were retrospectives of Sir Anthony, was there a young fest goer uh, that was uh, uh, making your way and festivals were part of that? Um, no, I, but I can only... I think I've been to about three festivals in Toronto. I've been to Sundance and Venice. Um, they're always a unique experience because I don't know, you know, to get to know people you've never worked with or never seen before. I met Kate at the Golden Globe so some years ago and I'd never met her before. Um, what, what I like about the Toronto Film Festival very much, we're all festival, um, was the, uh, the intimacy of, I've been very fortunate the last five years was I've done, let's say, three or four small budget films, which are very satisfying. But with regard to Toronto, the first one was The Edge with Alec Baldwin, and that was some kind of small scale films in the vast openness of uh, Canada where we filmed, but there are only three characters, uh, Alec Baldwin, myself, and the bear. <laughs> so it was an intimate, symbolic film. But, and then recently, so I've been very fortunate. Those are my favorite sort of films. I'm, you know, the, the small intimate films. Then the recent one that came my way was The uh, Father, with this remarkable man, uh, 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 Florence Zeller, uh, uh, French writer and playwright, and his uh, scriptwriter, Christopher Hampton, we did this film called The, the Father with... Um, Olivia Coleman, and what was extraordinary about it was the uh, compactness. Of it. The, um, the, the writing was compact and powerful, and it wasn't hard work because this, when you have a good script, and so you said that these sort of films need persons. And I'm only sorry I can't be there. I'm sorry mm -hmm. that uh, um, uh, Florian and uh, Olivia are there, but. Uh, that's my experience. And what I liked about the Toronto Film Festival, particularly, is the, um, as I said, the intimacy of it. Or, <laughs> you know, you go to the hotel and you're sitting next to Ted Danzig or, you know, uh, or Danny DeVito, and I, I'd never met him before. Um, that crucial get together um, is unique. Yeah. Because, you know, you, it's like Strange in the Night, you just pass through people's lives and you do a film, it's goodbye and hello and see you again one day. And then you meet up in a festival or you, with someone you've never met before. And, uh, and you may never meet again. That's what it's like. It's like being in Carnival. You know, yeah. You yeah. travel on the road, and off you go. There's, there's also um, that immediacy. Like I read the variety notices uh, for The Father, which were extraordinary. And we're all talking, but we're kind of like talking in an echo chamber because we're not in TIFF. We're not on the streets. You're not running into the people who just came out of the father at TIFF and saying, oh, my God, you know, uh, there's Anthony Hopkins. Wow, it's uh, one of the best things he's done. There's something about being elbow to elbow with people yeah. as they're seeing the movies. Uh, now we're, we feels like we're on the ultimate time delay, you know, so. It's a hard one to get used to, isn't it? I mean, this, this environment. It seems so bizarre, and I don't know how long it's going to go on. Who knows? But, anyway. but um, and moving uh, on from uh, talking about the festivals and to, uh, to the movies themselves and the times, um, one of the things someone just said to me yesterday, Sir Anthony, that uh, um, your 
current embrace uh, of an artist is uh, Rachmaninoff. Is that uh, is that fair to say? Well, I, I play the piano um, every day, you know, at least five days a week, and I have got it about five hours, well, four hours, five hours sometimes. But I love playing Rachmaninoff. I don't know because they're so powerfully affirmative, and uh, he was a powerful composer, and. Uh, when I'm playing it, I think maybe this will get rid of the virus. Is there such power in music? <laughs> I know I can't paint a stone, don't get me wrong on that. But I, I'm my technique's okay, but I, I just love playing piano because it's great. It, it keeps my brain active. I'm in the 83 then, so but I keep active. And the piano is a wonderful way of um, doing it. I like painting. Do all I found lots of things I can do during this pandemic and this lockdown, and that is to paint and to read and uh, play the piano. And I'd be here this morning. And Kate, you were saying earlier that uh, part of your uh, daily regime is uh, is still, there's a normalcy of uh, taking your kids to school. Is that, uh, uh, that's moving forward in a nice way and uh, um, people are actually able to go outside the house and go, go to school uh, in England right now? Yeah, we do have this new rule of six that's just come in um, within households um, and outside, actually. So that's new. We're sort of adjusting to that. But but yes, yeah, schools schools have gone back. And, and actually for, for teenagers in, in particular, I think it's really important that they're finally able to see one another and be back and sharing experiences like, like a classroom um, again. Um, because I think that's, it's really that age that they're, they're meant, it's, it's been so hard on the mental health of, of, of the teenagers. Um, so to see some happy teens wandering around again is, has been really quite, quite lovely. Um, but I've, I've really appreciated this time, you know, just the time. And, and, and of course I, you know, I'm, I'm in a position where I'm fortunate, nice house, big garden and, uh, and, and, and lots of, you know, health, good health, um, and so to have this this time to just be to, be together, um, and not trying to achieve lots and lots of things. You know, I always feel like in life we're trying to do so much and juggle too much. I know that I am for sure, always trying to do too many things, and just learning a bit of uh, of stillness um, uh, for for all of us. I think has has been has been quite quite important um especially when one's children are growing up and growing growing off you know they want to they want to go and they want to explore and actually being very aware of you know this this time being possibly the last that we might all be in one space before they go off and and create their own lives um so yeah. we've, we we do feel very fortunate to have been able to have this this moment in spite there, there is of you know it's hard to so many Hard to say it, but there is a silver lining in it. I I like what uh, Sir Anthony said about uh, beating the virus with uh, Rachmaninoff. Um, uh, I would go around and ask, uh, does anyone have a Rachmaninoff uh, that's helping them beat the virus? Uh, I'll start with you, Kate, and we'll move over to Terence. Well, I don't play the piano, but funnily enough, everyone else in my family has been teaching themselves through lockdown. So to be honest, and that's not necessarily a great thing in my house. <laughs> so, so we've got a six and a half year old, a 42 year old, a 16 year old and a 19 year old, all teaching themselves to play the piano. So you were, e so you were eager to come to this press conference today. <laughs> <laughs> Just get me out of the house. <laughs> No, I, did have to, I did have to, yeah, I, you know, the, I, I've, I've gotten very good at like pre-cooking meals, knowing that there's a conference to do or a Zoom meeting or something, you know, so making dinner at, at 10 in the morning has become very much my, my forte. Um, uh, yeah, so no Rachmaninoff for me, but, you know, a little bit of dabbing and, for everybody else. And Terence, uh, we, we have to go to you for uh, what's getting you through it. Well, I mean, I'm kind of like Kate, you know, uh, I have uh, four kids, two are grown, two are in college, and the college kids, they came home, and it was beautiful to have them here, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, because like Kate was talking about, we were just having a lot of great family moments that we knew we wouldn't get a chance to have in any other situation. Mm -hmm. um, 
the interesting thing about it is though, uh, my wife and myself, we were a little sad to see them go until they actually left the house. You know, uh, <laughs> once we had the house back to ourselves, it's been uh, kind of cool. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, you, know, and, you, hate to, you hate to admit that. I mean, because I love my kids, you know, and it, it was great <laughs> having them around for five months. <laughs> um, even the greatest things have their limits. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, you know, uh, you know, we live on the bayou. We have great, beautiful, scenic views of the water, you know, so it's very peaceful. Uh, but listen, you know, we're like everybody else. We, while we feel fortunate, while we feel blessed, we still miss, you know, the human interaction, being able to be around friends, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to talk to people and communicate with people in yeah. person. You know, those, those things, are the, those are the things that still make it a bit difficult. But we've been mm -hmm. forging through and we've been successful. We've been and New Orleans is, is one of the great cities of the world. And uh, I think everyone here, um, you know, cherishes their time in all these great cities and that the cityness of life uh is what's really taking a beating you know we can do gardening and we can be in our homes and there are solitary activities and there's nature but there's no substitute for new york city or toronto or uh, all these great cities i'm going to switch over to some questions i have um the folks out in the journalistic uh, ranks have uh, been kind enough to give us some questions uh La Picasso Sandoval from the New York Amsterdam News has a question for Mira. Um, what do you think, um, uh, and where do you think Indian uh, storytellers are going in, in terms of the um, meshing and working with Hollywood? Uh, do you see changes or positive changes or what it would be the, maybe perhaps some of the obstacles toward uh, um, a better scene for you? You know, I think that the level of cinema on all levels in India, and not just from what they call Bollywood, which is Bombay-centric, Hindi-speaking films, but also the regional cinema, which is not often spoken of, um, from Bengal or South India. It's a very vibrant, vigorous cinema that is coming, uh, has always been coming out of India. And I just don't think that Hollywood needs to be its lodestar. You know, uh, so I, it, it, the, the question that was framed is as if, you know, what does it take to get to Hollywood or, or is it going to be easier? But that's not what most people in India are thinking about, thank mm -hmm. goodness, you know, yeah, good. because we have extraordinarily vigorous uh, audiences and, mm -hmm. and uh, we have, I would say, sometimes a different rhythm of making our stories that is not a Hollywood uh, vocabulary of any sort. So, and now, uh, in addition to our own bigger, we have these streaming, you know, the Netflix and the Amazons and the and all of that actually takes these series that are made completely locally uh, out into the world, you know, and with, with pretty massive audiences because yeah. our diaspora alone is a formidable, formidable audience, you know. So, uh, the the lodestar is not Hollywood and should not be, you know. Uh, it, we really have our own situation going. I'm kind of this unique, weird anomaly who works between the zones, yeah. you know, of independence and Hollywood sometimes. But that is not the concern that is in India. Thank you. And Chloe, um, speaking of working between worlds, um, how have the festivals and the honors you received how do you see them? Uh, this is a question, by the way, from uh, um, Michael Sandoval of Muse TV. Uh, how do you see the festival acclaim and uh, what's happened to you? Is there a direct link between that and now you're working uh, on a Marvel project at least? I wish you asked me how I get through the pandemic instead. Okay. <laughs> what's the problem with that? And, uh... <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I mean, it, I, I don't know, actually. I don't know what the... What, uh, I don't think there is much of a difference, really. I get up in the morning and I, and I go to work and I, I tell the stories I want to tell with the people I want to tell it with. And then I go to bed feeling pretty grateful, um, both on smaller films and, and on Marvel films. Um, you know, uh, Diego Andalus from Awards Watch uh, asked, uh, what was it like for you to work on two movies uh, so closely together? How did you work between the two projects? 
I think it's, it's, actually, it's stressful, but it's a blessing as well, because when one isn't going so great, at least I could emotionally think, oh, the other one's going to work. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a nice balance, too, because sometimes all your eggs in one basket is really stressful. And I, um, because I was working, editing both films at the same time, and I was the editor on Nomadland, it's very informative for both films. Sometimes I, I learn something from one I think I can take into the other. Um, that has been a, a very fruitful experience. Uh, thanks. Um, we have a question from eTalk for Kate. Um, you were you told Vanity Fair your portrayal of the love story in Ammonite is one of the most joyful experiences of your career. Uh, how do you see that uh, today uh, translating or impacting in terms of people seeing the film and being part of TIFF today? Is there is, is this been a, a fairly compact uh, experience in terms of finishing and then getting uh, into TIFF with this? Well, you know, when it's a, it's a really funny thing when you're an actor because believe it or not, we often don't really know when the films are going to come out. <laughs> you know, it's like you sort of find out kind of very close to the moment and particularly in this climate, you know, oh, the US release has been brought forward, oh no, it's going back, or oh, actually now the UK release has been pushed way back. So there's all this sort of, you know, stuff that goes on. And, and actually, none of those things matter in terms of when the film is coming out. But what, what matters to me is that the experience of making Ammonite was, it was such a gift. It was, I, I love my job. I just love to act. I love acting. I love playing parts that make me feel terrified and playing parts that make me feel incredible joy. And I was given an opportunity to play someone who I really thought, I'm just not sure if I can do that. And to work alongside Francis and to have his help and guidance and 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 love, you know, it was a, a you know, we 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 really got along, all of us, myself, Francis, and Saoirse Ronan, and 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 the incredible crew. You know, we had such a low budget for this film, and you know, people show up because they want to be there. They want to tell that story with you, in tandem with you, and and it was a film that ticked so many boxes in terms of the the creative. Like Anthony was saying earlier, you know, sometimes we get these these opportunities to do small, incredibly rewarding pieces that are quiet and intimate and, um, and, and often a little bit more focused and connected just because there's less stuff, there's less stuff and you realize that that stuff just isn't important. Mm -hmm. What's important is the people that you're going to work with each day and looking in the eyes of those individuals and, and telling a story together. And, and so to come full circle and, and to be at TIFF and honoured like this and, and given an opportunity to talk about Ammonite in a way that is really special to me, um, it's, 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 it's just such a, such a pleasure. And, and, uh, and, and I, just, I feel very grateful, feel really, really grateful. Thank you. And um, leads to something uh, Russell Nelson with Carpet News TV. Uh, I, I'm going to interpret his question for Sir Anthony. Um, Talking about working with other actors and acting, a director once told me there are two kinds of actors, those who love to act and those who run from it. Which are you? Oh, I love to act. <laughs> I, love it. I love it because it, 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 it is a mystery to me. I've been trying to think of clever answers. If I was asked the question, what is acting about? I really don't know. I don't know what it means. Uh, and that's the truth. I just enjoy it, and I'm I'm so uh, extraordinarily fortunate in my life. I've been given an amazing life being an actor, and I think just recently working with um, Vivek Coleman and uh, um, Soren Zeller and uh, an incredible cast from the father. Um, it sounds weird, but it, it it's a very intense film. It's deeply intense and deeply disturbing it's about uh, dimension. And yet, working with Olivia and the rest of the class, everyone's so free and easy. And, uh, good morning, have a cup of tea, have breakfast, and, you know, well, how are you doing all right? Get in the car and, you know. And um, then on the set they say, okay, stand by please, action. And suddenly something happens. I don't know 
wife. I am 82, I'm going to say, and I'm close to the edge. Uh, so it was, um, it was quite an experience, and, and simple to say, my, my belief is that acting is that you just have to know the text well, use, don't overanalyze it, and just enjoy it. And that's what I do, I enjoy it. Thank um, you. I've got a moment for life, so that's it really. Yeah. Well, I've enjoyed this. I wish we could all go have a cup of tea together. <laughs> uh, but I think we're going to be a TIFF next year doing that, I hope. And I uh, want to thank everyone and thank TIFF uh, for making this possible. I don't know if we have any other housekeeping. Uh, I'm frantically looking at my notes to see the end of them. I think that uh, the red light is flashing. And I uh, thank you all for uh, for joining us and uh, enjoy. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. you, everyone. Thank you.